Today's paper is Pixel to Sequence, a language modeling framework for object detection. The paper tackles object detection problem as a language modeling task. The model predicts bounding box and class of an object as a sequence of tokens. It makes minimal assumptions about the task and it shows competitive results on COCO dataset. The figure shows the proposed framework of pixel to sequence. The idea is simple. Given an image as an input to the network, the pixel to sequence model generates a sequence of token. This token is composed of a token representing the coordinate of a bounding box and a class. So for each object, four tokens are used to represent the bounding box of an object, and one token is used to represent the class of an object. As we can see in the figure, there's no complex architectures like Region Proposal Network or ROI Align. It just takes an image as an input and predicts a sequence of tokens in an autoregressive manner. Now, one might think how it's even possible to predict object coordinates like predicting tokens in language models. The authors of the paper solve this problem by discretizing the coordinates in an image into bins. Um, for example, the figure shows different discretization of bounding boxes on an image of 480 by 640. And using only 10 bins, this is shown in the leftmost example, think of it as dividing each x and y axis into 10 sections, and each section will now act as a token. The tokens used to represent the bounding box will then be something like, um, in x direction, it's going to be like x1, x2, x3 to x10, and in y directions we could use 10 bins, so it's going to be like y1, y2, y3 to y10. So using only 10 tokens, we can represent the coordinate of an object. However, um, setting a small number of bins will limit capturing the location of the objects, as we can see in figure, uh, this figure A and B. However, um, but we could increase the number of bins, and when the number of bin increases, say to 50 or 500, um, we can see that it's able to capture object with high precision. Uh, increasing this number of bins isn't a big problem because in language models, we, we know that the size of vocabulary is much higher. Let's say it's, it's like a, it's about 32K or it's higher. So it's not a problem to increase the number of bins. Now, one might also wonder how ground tooth generation should be done. Um, there are multiple objects in an image, and if one wants to predict this in an autoregressive manner, um, we need to think of the ordering of the objects. Let's say, for example, in this image, um, we could question, um, should person label come first before the motor motorcycles, or should the motorcycles come before the person label? We don't know that. Um, however, the authors test different ordering. Um, let's say it could be the all the all the ground truth in the data set could be uh, starting from top left to bottom right. Um, but the authors say that since ordering of objects do not matter for the detection task, they use random ordering stretch strategy. So um, what this means is that uh, it's shown in the right figure as well. Um, there are three objects in an image. And this image could have random order of objects. So person in a blue box can be predicted first, um, followed by two motorcycles. Or two motorcycles, these labels could come first before the person object. So when training the network, um, these labels are fed into the model randomly. So the ground truth, cr ground truth of the of each sample is assigned randomly. And the authors claim that this increases the robustness of the model. And in order to improve the performance of the model, um, the authors use the sequence augmentation technique. In conventional autoregressive language modeling task, the target sequence is the same as an input sequence. 
Um, only difference is that there is a start token in the input sequence and the end of sentence EOS token in the target sequence. This is shown better in the figure right here. Um, the input sequence token is fed into the decoder and decoder is trained to predict the next token in an autoregressive manner, um, looking at the token predicted in the earlier step. Now, instead of having this traditional architecture, the authors instead augment the input sequence during training by adding a synthetic noise tokens. This is shown as a yellow token in the figure. These synthetic labels are given a class of noise label and is added at the end of the input sequence. These are created either by adding noise to existing ground truth objects or generating random boxes in the background. The target tokens are augmented to let the model identify these noise tokens. The coordinate tokens of noise objects are given an NA label, it's uh, represented right here, um, whose loss weights are set to zero when training. The model only learns to identify the noise class labels. This figure 6 right here um, represents the noise labels added in the image. So the colored boxes are the ground truth and the white boxes are the noise boxes added when training. And adding this noise label in training increases the overall performance of the model. Now this table shows the performance of the pixel to sequence model on Coco validation set. The model achieves average precision of 45% when compared to the recently published transformer based model DTR, it's only 0.1% higher, but the methodology used in pixel to sequence is much simpler. Also, when compared to other two stage object detectors like um, faster RCNN, the model shows competitive results. The link to the paper and some useful resources will be provided in the description. That's all for today and I'll see you next time with a new paper.